I feel like I need to start this build video with a warning because there is a solid chance that you will get addicted to this build. The ability spam, the chaos, the lightning, it's all just so mesmerizing. It's incredibly strong for any activity in the game and borderline overpowered when placed in team situations, where it can fuel your teammates' abilities in addition to your own, summon an army of lightning turrets, and increase team-wide boss DPS by hundreds of thousands of damage points. So, if that sounds exciting to you and you're a part of the 67% of viewers not yet subscribed, consider clicking that button down below to switch teams. With that done, let's turn you into an Ark Warlock God. This entire build revolves around the Ark collectible object, Ionic Traces, which are energizing seekers that track to you, refunding 12.5% to your grenade and melee, and 15% to your class ability on pickup. But we might as well throw those numbers out of the window right away, because the exotic armor piece of this build that literally makes these more than twice as good is the Fallen Sunstar Helmet, which doubles the values of Ionic Trace ability regeneration up to a 25% refund to your grenade and melee, and 30% to your class ability. Additionally, any Ionic Traces that you scavenge will also grant 10% ability energy to all ally abilities that are near you at the time of pickup. That might not sound crazy strong, but once you realize that we will be making hundreds of Ionic Traces a minute, well, things start to get a little out of control. The main way we will create these Ionic Traces is through our first aspect, Electrostatic Mind, which in addition to making you amplified on Ionic Trace pickup, also creates Ionic Traces when defeating jolted or blinded targets, or when defeating targets with any arc ability. Basically, these Ionic Traces that refund ability energy are created with those very abilities that they refund. We'll have even more ways to generate these Ionic Traces as well as we continue through the build, but first I want to talk about that army of lightning turrets that I touched on in the intro. To summon this legion of arc robots, we'll incorporate our second aspect, arc soul which effectively turns your Rift class ability into a turret acquisition station. What I mean by that is that you or any ally that passes through your Rift will be granted an Arc Soul, which is an autonomous Arc turret that rests on your shoulder that fires at any enemies in sight. These Arc Souls remain on yourself and allies for 14 seconds, but can be reobtained or have their timers refreshed any time the user touches the rift. Additionally, while amplified, your arc souls are improved further with increased fire rate, which is always considering that those ionic traces that we generate from every ability kill will make us amplified on pickup. And if that wasn't enough, arc souls are also considered abilities, which means that every arc soul kill will also create an ionic trace. And to further help you maintain arc souls on yourself and your teammates through the arc soul aspect, your rift also charges faster when allies are near. Now, with just these two aspects alone, this build is already looking insanely strong. But since it's all about continuously funding our abilities through ability usage, what abilities do we want to use to accomplish that? The grenade of choice for this build is the Pulse Grenade which by far provides the best AoE ad clear and overall damage of any arc grenade in the game. For our melee slot, we'll look to opt into Ball Lightning, primarily for its impressive range that will make it much easier to refund other abilities through some of our mods down the line. On the class ability, I would urge you towards Healing Rift, as having your arc soul acquisition stations also act as a sort of medical bay helps greatly for team support and overall survival. Ability. Finally, for your super, the arc version of the Death Star in Chaos Reach will be the best option here. Moving on to the fragments for this build, we'll want to begin with some upgrades to the most consistent killing ability in our kit and our grenade with the Spark of Magnitude, which extends the duration of our pulse grenade. Following suit, we'll also want to grant our grenade additional capabilities through the Spark of Shock, which allows our grenades to jolt targets 
circling back to the electrostatic mind aspect from before that creates an ionic trace when defeating jolted targets. This means that any target that is even hit by and thus jolted by our grenade will spawn an ionic trace on death even if they are killed by something other than the grenade. But jolting enemies with our grenades is important for more than just that, due to the fact that the spark of ions will also generate an additional ionic trace when defeating a jolted target, meaning that when we kill any enemy with our grenade, we actually get two ionic traces, one from the electrostatic mind aspect and the other from the spark of ions fragment. Unfortunately, the spark of ions fragment does have a 10 second activation cooldown but the extra ionic traces are still incredibly beneficial to this build. The final fragment to top it all off is the Spark of Resistance, which grants a damage resistance buff when near enemies, a staple of any endgame arc loadout. Now, if you're watching this video outside of the Season of the Deep after August 22nd, 2023, then skip forward to the time on screen. Otherwise, you'll want to further arm yourself with a few of this season's artifact mod offerings to boost up your power even more. But while these mods are great, none of them are necessary or required for this build to work properly, so don't feel that you'll have to say goodbye to this build in a few months when they leave. The first of these mods is Electric Armor, which will increase your maximum amplified buff timer from 15 to 20 seconds. Number two is Amped Up, which will give you additional damage resistance while amplified. Third on the list will be Shock and Awe, which summons a burst of lightning that damages and jolts targets when you defeat enemies while amplified, which is actually fantastic for this build since, as we discussed before, any jolted target defeat will spawn an ionic trace. Entry number four will make our Chaos Reach the super it always deserved to be through Thunderous Retort, which increases the damage of arc supers that are cast while amplified. And finally, we have Lightning Strikes Twice, which grants increased grenade regeneration after grenade throw for a short duration, extendable through arc final blows. Now, before we dress up our armor pieces with armor mods, it's important to first discuss what should occupy our weapon slots. Since this build revolves around ionic traces, which can be further generated through jolted enemy defeats, the Volt Shot perk is one of the best pairings with the Fallen Sunstar Arc Warlock which when reloading after defeating an enemy, allows the weapon to jolt the next hit target. My two favorite weapons that carry this perk are the Eichelos SMG with Threat Detector and Volt Shot, and the Path of Least Resistance Trace Rifle with Subsistence and Volt Shot. At the end of the day though, any weapons can work incredibly well with this build, so Volt Shot is simply a recommendation rather than a requirement. What is going to be required though is this tasty set of mods, beginning with elemental charge on the boots to receive an escalating chance of armor charge stack acquisition when scavenging ionic traces, which considering how many we are creating, will have you at max armor charge stacks at the snap of a finger. As such, it only makes sense to also run charged up on the chest to increase the maximum amount of armor charge stacks we can hold from three to four. These armor charge stacks will be used to fuel our weapon damage buffs through a weapon surge mod on the boots, which will increase all weapon damage for an element of your choice by 10% while armor charged. We'll also want to generate some orbs as well through things like a siphon mod on our helmet for orb generation on matching element weapon multi-kills, firepower on the gloves for orb generation on grenade final blows, and reaper on the class item for orb generation on weapon final blows after class ability cast. And since we'll be casting our class ability a lot, it also makes sense to run bomber on the class item for a chunk of grenade energy refund whenever we lay our rift down. Additionally, we'll also want powerful attraction on the class item to automatically collect any nearby orbs of power on that same class ability cast. And if we run recuperation on our boots to receive a heal on orb of power collection, this means that our class ability cast will also give us an initial surge of healing through powerful attraction and recuperation working in tandem. Now circling back to our grenade, we'll want to speed up its cooldown further with impact induction on the gloves for a chunk of grenade energy when dealing melee damage. This is why I recommended ball lightning previously 
over Chain Lightning. With that additional grenade energy refund, these grenade kills will further benefit us as well through ashes to assets on the helmet for increased super gains on grenade final blows and through bolstering detonation on the gloves for a chunk of class ability energy when dealing grenade damage. Which is great since considering our class ability cast gives us grenade energy through bomber, these two abilities basically ping pong off of each other. From there, you can toss on some resists and stat mods, prioritizing resilience, discipline, and recovery, and you're ready to be on your way. And to speed up the process for you so that you can go put this build to use right now, as usual, I've included a Destiny item manager link that you can use to copy this entire build over to your guardian in just one click. To find it, just scroll below down to the description, which coincidentally is right next to those like and subscribe buttons. I hope you enjoyed the build video and enjoy using this build in game. I'll see you in the live stream. Thank you so much for watching and as always, have a great day.